course, the White House, Democrats, and the liberal media went after Joe Manchin for saying he was a no on President Biden's massive spending bill. But now, actress Bette Midler is lashing out at the West Virginia moderate and his home state and his voters. And she's getting a lot of heat for it. She tweeted this. What Joe Manchin, who represents a population smaller than Brooklyn, has done to the rest of America, who wants to move forward, not backward like his state, is horrible. He sold us out. He wants us all to be just like his state, West Virginia, poor, illiterate, and strung out. Wow. She later gave what I guess is an apology, but only after facing enormous backlash. Quote, I apologize to the good people of West Virginia for my last outburst. I'm just seeing red. Joe Manchin and his whole family are a criminal enterprise, she wrote. Is he really the best West Virginia has to offer its own citizens? Surely there's someone there who has the state's interests at heart, not his own. Uh, wow. Tommy, the grotesque Hollywood elite. I mean, you can't get that much lower calling an entire state poor and illiterate. You know, what is it with these leftist elites? You know, it's Hillary Clinton, deplorable and irredeemable. Joe Biden called us Neanderthals. Peter Strzok, smelly Walmart shoppers. The list goes on and on. Rubes is what CNN said. Why do they do this? That's what they honestly think of us. And that's not all Democrats, but that's certainly a lot of liberal elites out there, especially in Hollywood. And unfortunately, even our elected Democrats, a few of them feel that way about us. And we talk about those forgotten Americans, those Trump supporters. You don't even have to be a Trump supporter, really just people from middle America, places like I'm from in South Dakota. That's what they think of us. They look down upon us. We're not the coastal elites. And they think that we are less than they are because we don't live in Hollywood. We don't live in a high rise in New York City. But I would caution the American people to pay attention to this because it's not just people like Bette Midler, but it's a lot of that party, unfortunately. And we need Democrats that don't feel that way to stand up and speak out and say, whoa, whoa, this is not what we think of you. We believe in the forgotten Americans. We believe in middle America. We believe in the heartland. But unfortunately, Democrats aren't doing that. And that's why we're led to believe this is how they actually feel about us. Yeah, I'd love to see that, Kennedy. But when you have people at the top, the height of Democrat politics, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, using some of the same terminology to sum up a swath of voters. Look, President Trump, I know he would go after Democrats, uh, but they were Democrat politicians. He never went after half of the country voters. It's really a, kind of a new low in politics. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's like, I, I wonder what it's like to get to the point in your life where you become such a racist bigot uh, that you don't have a filter anymore. Like, is that freeing? Does Bette Midler have a good time? Uh, because if I said such horrible things about other people, I think I would wake up and feel pretty bad about myself. So, yeah, she's. this isn't the first time she had to walk something back. If you remember, in 2020, uh, she very cruelly, very rudely went after the former first lady uh, for her accent. So, yes, she dislikes immigrants. She dislikes people from parts of the country that she's mm. never been to. But you know what the interesting thing is? If she went to West Virginia, I think that she would be surprised how cool mm -hmm. and welcoming people actually are, even to a Amen. big fart face like her. Absolutely. And Harris, you know, we've talked a lot about on this program about Kirsten Cinema being chased into the bathroom to try to get her to vote for this monstrosity of a bill, the incivility. This was fascinating to that same end. This is Steve Clemens in the Hill. He's a friend of Joe Manchin. And he said this, that given that the protests that Manchin's family has experienced at his home, which is a boat in Washington Harbor with folks harassing him, his wife and his grandson by kayak around his boat in the gate to the marina, I knew this presidential statement, which called out Joe Manchin, was personalizing the game. It put his family at risk. In my view, everyone knows Manchin wow. and Kirsten Cinema are the two Democrats the White House must negotiate with because it has given up on Republicans. But to specify Manchin in a presidential statement meant the term of the deal making had changed. Uh, was this instrumental, you think, to him voting no or saying no? Well, look, I mean, he wants to keep his family safe and he wants to send a message that leave them out of it, certainly. Mm -hmm. But Joe Manchin is a talented politician. And no doubt what he really understands, and I've spoken with him more than once, um, is that, you know, this is a really mean game of carrot and stick. And the Democrats are out of ideas on how to sweeten the pot and, and put the carrot in front of him. So they're using the stick, and in this case, it's a club. And they're using it against him and anybody else who would disagree. Well, then they start to back off today. What does that tell us? That they are now glimpsing 2022 midterm elections 
as a day of gloom and doom for them. They don't have a plan now. The carrot stick didn't work. Now what do you do? Just hands in the air, everybody back off. But the liberal media doesn't get the message. And they continue to go after Senator Manchin. And then those same Democrats that are starting to do the walk back are now going to be asked about it. And if they give a conflicting answer, now they're liars. <laughs> right? Now if they suddenly start to back Joe Manchin and say, no, 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 he's a good guy, now they're liars. I mean, there's no winning for them. The White House has got egg on its face for that statement that they put out against him. It's a mess. And you know, the real thing that really gets burned is Biden's agenda. No Republicans crying about that. They can just sit quietly and eat their popcorn. Yeah, exactly. And they need Joe Manchin's vote. If they have anything else they want to do, they're going to need his vote this coming up year. But Fox News Digital, they did a great job. They went out on the yeah. ground in West Virginia to hear what voters had to say. Listen to what they said about Joe Manchin. I support Joe Manchin 120 percent for him um, not backing down to Biden. I think it was the right thing to do. Too much, too much money going the wrong direction. I do have mixed feelings, but I also think he has West Virginians in mind and what West Virginians want to do. Because West Virginia is suffering for Biden's choices. Chris Bedford, they stand with Manchin. I think we have some audio issues. I think we have some audio issues here. Uh, Tommy, it seems that these voters agree with Joe Manchin as we try to get uh, Chris Bedford's mic up. Yeah, they certainly agree with Joe Manchin, and they know that he is putting them and their state first, and also all those Americans right now that are suffering. It's not people like Bette Midler that are really suffering under Joe Biden. It's not people like Nancy Pelosi or anyone in Hollywood or really any of the elites. It's those middle-class Americans that are being pinched, that are being squeezed by the inflation, the out-of-control spending, the threats of more lockdowns, shutdowns, mandates, restrictions, infringements. Those are the Americans that are struggling, and those are the Americans, whether they're Democrat or Republican, they're not going to vote for another Democrat in 2022 or in 2024 that's putting the squeeze on them. It's one thing to be a social media activist and to type wonderful things on Twitter that gets you virtue signal points, and it's quite another to be at a grocery store or at a kitchen table and hear from real Americans about what they're facing. Chris, unlike the fake audio problems of the Biden administration with that VP Harris interview, we actually had an audio problem, but you're back. Ah. Give us your final thoughts. <laughs> Now, if you go to West Virginia, you're going to see beautiful country. You're going to see absolutely yeah. wonderful people. You are also going to see a huge amount of poverty, uh, a huge amount of drug problems, towns that were decimated by people like Michael Bloomberg and President Barack Obama with their anti-coal campaigns. And the reason why you don't see any kind of charitable uh, fundraisers going on in Hollywood, it's the same reason why you didn't see it for South Boston, an incredible amount of poor white people in the 70s and 80s and 90s who got no helping hand. That's because it's not fashionable to try and help the poor white people in this country. They don't have the right accent. They don't have the right access and it just doesn't make the Hollywood elite feel quite as good it doesn't feed their their patriarchy or their, their patrimony that they, they, they try to get so high off of it's a real problem and it's the reason why Bernie Sanders and President uh, Donald Trump did so well in 2016 was mm. talking to people who have been forgotten who are not fashionable to throw galas for in Hollywood and who really really are suffering yeah a lot of forgotten Americans in West Virginia and President Trump won the state by 40 points there's an absolute reason for that and you nailed it Chris Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.